Welcome to the Propaganda Report. I'm Monica Perez here with my co-host Brad Binkley and a very good friend of ours and a good friend of the show, JJ Boogie and his good friend, Zay. So I think I'm not going to do it justice to give you guys an intro. So JJ, I'm going to make you do it. <laughs> Me do the intro? Oh, yeah, well, you're going to do yeah. the intro to you. Who oh, my you gosh. And who is Zay? Sorry. Yeah. It could be just a sentence or two. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm JJ, a, a guitar player for, with Arrested Development and Fire on the Knife. Uh, Zay, I've been, well, I've been with the group. I've been working with the group since 98. And that's when I first met Zay uh, back then. And back then, actually, he went by Ike. So I knew him as Ike first, and then he, he later, uh, uh, you know, changed it to Zay. So, uh, uh, yeah, he's my, he was been my big brother uh, musically for some, literally since 98. He taught me so much over the years. We, we toured the world together. Uh, whenever we were forced to, to share a hotel room, me, me and Zay were always uh, uh, bunks, bunking up, you know, and hanging out. And, you know, and so we've known each other a long time. What was that's that like? Hotel it. rooms. I remember going yeah. on sports trips. The hotels were always fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, some of them were uh, immaculate and amazing and beautiful. And uh, there was one time where, uh, do you remember the, the volcano in uh, a couple of years ago that went off uh, in Greenland or something or Iceland or something? We were, we were in uh, Europe and we were at the very end of the tour and we got stuck in Belgium and they shut the airports down and uh, we decided to grab some cheap hotel thinking we'd be there for like a day but it turned out to be like stretched out for like three or four days and they put us in this raggedy little <laughs> hotel near the airport oh, and it was like little cots that we were like we it might we might as well have been just sharing the same bed it was the room was so small <laughs> it was hilarious i was like i'm like yeah i'm like honey i'm basically sleeping with a big black man <laughs> <laughs> That would explain how you guys got to know each other so well and have all these conversations where you got the deep inner workings of each other's minds. Yeah. I want more of it. I have to say, Arrested Development, what a great band. It could be the last band I have ever seen live because if I don't get the vax, they might not let me see another show. And wow. I saw you guys in Vegas yeah. in yeah. February, I think it was. Yeah, it was the end of February. Yeah, that was our last. that was our last last real show we did a little local thing uh on uh for a local news fox five for a morning thing at city winery um but it was just it wasn't even the full band because they didn't want to let in, uh, a lot of people in so but yeah we you know speech is dying to do live music again we all are you know um at least at, at that level i've been gigging every weekend and every week with my wife's band uh, fire on the knife and so i've been that's just been keeping me sane you know yeah this what have the gigs been like uh, a lot of them have been totally packed i mean packed out like nobody wearing masks except uh the 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 bartenders and the waitresses and you know <laughs> that's it you know but but people like they just want to feel normal again there was one place in alpharetta they had to start shutting down at 11 because they were staying open at one but all the college kids were wanting to hang out and party and it was getting like it was just getting so crazy that like they could you know it was just getting too crazy like people were out partying so they're like let's just let's just sh shut down a little earlier <laughs> it's yeah. so ridiculous because out in california which i've been this entire time they shut it down to the point where i was in the i on the day that they had the first mask mandate in the country i was there in riverside county it's been like that ever since and they're still telling us it's surging 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 and you just want to shake them like look uh. even if i bought into all all this stuff that you're saying, which I definitely don't. Can you not learn from this? Like, is yeah. this? Do you think this is working? Because Georgia is doesn't. I'm not hearing about the surge in Georgia. Yeah, Ugh, the whole thing makes me crazy. But if I have to go down and never see another live show, I will feel proud that the last one was seen. <laughs> you ever right on. Me. So, but this is why I always did want to talk to you, JJ Buggy, and I wanted to, you're uh, just such an, um, you know, an individual and as an individual who has his own opinions, 
and is from, you know, in your field, your opinions are probably unusual. But when you told yeah. me that Zay was the first, or when you said, oh, I'm going out with my buddy and he's the first conspiracy theorist I ever met. Yeah. And how long you've known him. I just, I, I just got to know. I got to, I, I have to pick Zay's brain. I'm sorry. I'm oh, not trying it. to leave pick away. Yet, but Zay, I, uh, first I want to know how, what woke you up? Like, how did you realize that there was, you know, there was, there was a man behind the curtain? Wow. Um, well, I always felt that it was a man behind the curtain for some reason. It's just, you know, I was that kind of guy, you know? And, uh, so when the, uh, information uh, like that starts spinning around, I just ran right to it. And, um, yeah, I've been there ever since, but, um, I would have to say, Professor Griff, years ago. From Public Enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was, he was, uh, when I got some, you know, paperwork, I think it was called Black Down in White America, or something like that. Kind of got me started. Then I went into uh, David Icke and uh, oh, yeah. Alex Jones. And, David Wilcox, conscientious media. Net. David Wilcox, the, <laughs> the um, ancient aliens guy, right? He does like these yeah. epic five hour long talks on YouTube sometimes. My friend will send me videos. Hey, watch this. And it'll be like a seven hour video and be like, dude, you got to isolate something here. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, no, he'll go. Yeah, he'll, no, you're right. But, you know, you, you're searching. So, I yeah, just, you know. I just listen. I, I call myself an observer. I don't really call myself a conspiracy theorist. I just yeah, I was wondering. I didn't want to hang a label on you, but I, I you know, if you if you're sensitive, I didn't think you're. Oh, I'm not sensitive. That you're not I, sensitive. No, I'm just you know, just how I feel. I'm just stating you know how I, I am about. Yeah, me too. More of an observer. Yeah. For me, but, I but feel he's like been I'm on that tip cracker. for. Yeah. Oh yeah. I feel like well, I'm a code cracker. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I just say this official narrative doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to come up with a better one that actually has some like pictures attached to it that make more sense than the stuff that you're spewing. Yeah. And I, so I don't even think I'm not even theorizing. Right. I'm just trying to figure stuff out. But yeah. Professor Griff, I, he, who did he, he was on someone's show last year and got, uh, everybody had all sorts of trouble uh, over that. Whose show was Nick that? Cannon or something? Yes. Oh yeah. I remember that. Yes. Yeah. And it was like untouchable. And I thought, well, I'm going to watch this. And some of the stuff he was saying I had never heard before, but a lot of it made sense. And the way they depicted it, they really tried to shut him up by calling him names, saying he was anti-Semitic and all that so yeah. that you couldn't be open to the message. And I hear that a lot. I feel like that's a big they just want to steer you away make you feel shame. And I wonder if, especially in entertainment, where there's so much at stake to have a kind of public approval to you rely on other people to have a platform, is there pressure to kind of not think for yourself? They act like they're speaking truth to power, but if you deviate at all, I feel like the backlash is unbearable. Hmm. Well, I think it's more than just in the music industry. I think it's all over now. I mean, there's a, just from my angle, my my opinion. I sometimes say strong opinion because I'm older, and I remember before the, the this technology, you know, uh, came to be as it is. And when you start to see it, 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 I don't like to say I was conscious, but I'm aware, and you can just see it changing. And um, you know, for me, the divide has been planned for a long time. I mean, from the conspiracy uh, mindset, you know, looking at May first, seventeen seventy six. If you want to go there. You know, with uh, you know Adam Weishaupt and you know many others also, but um, but they were bringing this idea uh, ideology in, and uh, I think what happened is that we we didn't understand what was really going on. They, they I feel they were trying to take over the nation this this whole time. You know, the whole thing is about the one world order it, entirely. Uh, I think all the division is based off of uh, that agenda. Um, it's real and, and it's pain, but it's planned, um, I feel. And they want to keep you from knowing anything. I mean, you see now they're censoring, they're doing, it's pretty obvious right now. But the thing is that surprised me is how they have a divide with uh, no matter what race you are, if you're you know, with uh, one party or another party, you're, you know, kill them. I mean, I'm hearing all kind of craziness. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, out there, but they created this divide um, a long time ago, and they've been working on this divide for a long, long time, controlling the media, as you know, when I learned years ago that, you know, a uh, handful of people own everything we see watching here. And then you start seeing how that, you know, is, is applicable to your existence. So what does it mean, you know? And then you just start seeing laws changing. You know, you start hearing back when I was young, uh, government overreach. Not understanding what it is, you know, you're raising kids, you know, you know, government overreach. What, what you mean, government overreach? <laughs> and then you keep, you know, on, you know, living, and you start figuring that out. And so, by the time the conspiracy world, I think, um, got big, you know, with the Alex Jones and next to David Ike and uh, so many, I can't, uh, I say so many I've listened to. Um, he's been doing it for years. He's been listening yeah. to him. <laughs> and, and yeah. I'm just listening. Ahead, the older stuff was more accurate, I think. Like now there's a lot of um, it gets crazy. I, I invented a little bit off color expression, taint agent. So they'll take somebody who is saying mostly true things and they'll have him just say something crazy that sounds crazy or have him do something that discredits him and discredits that whole body of thought. I feel like as this thing has changed the way you're talking, where it becomes more of a threat, they, it's kind of like the powers that be have, I think, have embraced the conspiracy stuff, but only if it's really sounds crazy. And then they they emphasize that. I think they're going in every direction you can think of. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a war. It's a war going on. Informational warfare uh, is for real. I mean, it's all of it. I, I normally say biological, psychological, technological, you know, the chemical informational warfare. That's what's going on, and we have to identify it so we can do something about it. I feel strongly uh, yes. about that because we have to be able to give the children something to be able to navigate some information that they can navigate. We, we, we can't change it. You and I and Jay, but we can give information uh, in a way that will cause people to, to think, not tell them, you know, what to think, but how to think um, and where to look at, you know, where to look at things. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think people do enough uh, due diligence in my circle. I can't speak for everybody, but it, it just feels like a little, too many people aren't really paying attention to the important things. And I think, for example, uh, more than anything right now, is the Constitution. Um, that's why I hamper when I hear, no matter what I see going on now from death shootings, it doesn't matter. It's but they're going after the Constitution as far as I'm concerned, um, eroding the First Amendment. You know, giving you words you can't say. You, you complain when somebody call you this or that, so you go to the government to make laws. <laughs> That's eroding your, your your First Amendment. It, you don't have to go to school for any of this. It's real simple. We don't have to be deep into the conspiracies and know everybody's name in the industry or in the concern, I should say. Um, we can see what's happening here. They're eroding the Constitution, Second Amendment, as you know. Um, so I think the Constitution, um, people, uh, not enough people, are aware of what it is except for a name. I have to I have to say you're a hundred percent right. And I I was on terrestrial radio for a while, WSB in Atlanta, and I was so far down the rabbit hole that I I did I kind of gave up. I looked at the country and it's like people aren't, you know, they're just not awake. They they aren't thinking for themselves, all the things you're saying. And but I had to hang on to one thing. And if I would say, look, that's not a true story. They're just saying that so that you will give up your rights and I can prove that wasn't a true story. I would lose a lot of people. And finally, I just said, you know what? I'm not even going to waste my time because that was the other thing. Trying to figure out false flags, cracking those codes took a lot of time and energy. And a lot of people just didn't buy it. And I said, look, don't even worry about it. But whatever story they're telling you, if the punchline is so we have to pull back on your rights a little bit either don't believe the original story or just say hey you know let's look back and say what 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 law what fundamental law what good law were you already violating that got us into this bad spot or if you had the second amendment totally free and clear would you have prevented that school shooting like you can every time i've gone back to the fundamental law like the Bill of Rights, I could solve the problem that they were throwing up there as an excuse to peel it away. And I would just tell people, don't believe my conspiracy theory, just protect the rights to the death. And now what did they do? They threw up this illness, supposedly, that has totally shut down the First Amendment in a way that I couldn't even have imagined. We have no right to assemble anymore. I, I The ability to to worship inside well, well, a place if, of worship. If I can ask, if you know, when, when was that right taken away? 
to assemble. Well, I feel like the COVID thing, like, so freedom of speech was already being eroded, but with the COVID thing, they were telling you that they were certainly discouraging you from going to, I I wanted to have a march on Washington on the 4th of July. And people were kind of like, well, you know, I don't know what the regulations are. Are we going to be able to take buses there? Are we all going to be able to congregate on the mall? It's going to be kind of hard to keep people six feet apart and wear masks. So I feel like that curtailed our right to assemble. They Something divide and conquer the public and they, they make the public a portion of the public enforce the, what they don't. They don't have to mandate it. They don't have to necessarily remove the Constitution itself. But by making a segment of the public shame anybody who does things that they don't like, like you're not supposed to go protest for anti lockdown. So they'll have a bunch of protesters there shaming you and yelling at you. You'll be blasted all over the news media. You'll be made out to be a demon. So they erode the rights to, to assemble in that form. Do public and actually, pressure and shame. Zay, Brad has brought one of the shows that we do. We do a video series on Rockfin, which is like a kind of Netflix on the Internet, where he'll bring video of people at the Brookings Institution or the Council of Foreign Relations or the World Economic Forum who are actually plotting this stuff. They're saying if we can get a preacher to say this or we can get a nurse to say this, if we can get a rich guy to call an elected official, we can call the shots here without having to change the laws. I mean, they say stuff like that and <laughs> and like they are that is a conspiracy and they and you see it unrolling, yeah, yeah. you know, but yeah. I, so I don't care what's true or not true. The fact is, these laws all came down, these Bill of Rights and everything, in a time when people were biological organisms, where people did get sick, where people did have guns. So the panic, like you were saying, people don't research enough. They don't think critically enough. I think it's this constant state of emotional tension. And that's why they throw this shooting and germs. Well, well, it's definitely got to be a fear factor. It, 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 it's it's a main key, but I, I think now you know people like us who've been in it for a while. Um, we, we have to now devise some kind of way that we can communicate the importance of what's being taken from you because we're being, if I can say this correctly, uh, ideologically evicted. You know, from our, our constitution, our thinking, the way that we think, the way that we, yeah. uh, everything. I mean, our whole—it's a whole new <laughs> world order. It's a I great mean, term. I do. Yeah, I'm going to write, evicted. put that in my in my yeah. uh, glossary. I see the dog in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Zildjian back there. Okay. Yeah, Zay is part <laughs> Italian, so he he talks with his hands sometimes. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. <laughs> but but um, but but I, I think we have to understand it, it's a contract. We're all here in in this nation because of a contract there's all kind of things that have been said about that contract being the constitution uh bad and good oh, i was written by these people that people that and no one's really read it <laughs> you know it's like when people it's come so from, simple I'm, well the thing i ask when people start judging it the history and you know hating history and they change history the first thing i ask is did you read it i mean you know you hear everybody make these statements and people kind of run for just from statements well somebody said and they go into it all emotional uh emotionally they buy into it and we have to take a step back and understand that the constitution is being taken from us for real that's what's actually going on and i my strong position is everything that's happening is to keep us distracted from being men and women about our scenario so we can see what's actually going on in the political realms um in this country it's important that we actually get it i feel because we're the power (laughs) we're we're the sovereigns, you know, and we're not understanding that position. We're not understanding who we are in this game. We don't understand what's really being taken from us. We have, we don't have an option and I, you know, it may be a better way, but, but we haven't heard a better way. So my thing is, why don't you know what your, the way is, meaning the constitution, declaration of independence, know what it is. The beautiful thing about it is it can be amended. And, and we can put uh, people, vote people in to handle these uh, situations for us, these changes. You're not going to get that in all these other nations without, you know, fights. You know, they're more subjects. We're, we're not subject here. We got to understand who we are. We're sovereign. No man is above us or below us. You know, uh, no one's above us except for the creator, whoever that might be. So they, I feel they've taken that out of the educational system. 
um, the Constitution, the understanding you have to know the law if you're going to operate in any situation, marriage, cars, mortgage. I mean, it's a contract. Everything is a contract. So the Constitution is a contract with multicultural people coming together and, and making a claim. And we have to defend this thing now. But if it's gone, we're not comprehended, number one. And then they wrote it. I'm telling you, the kids are going to be up for anything. Uh, the the uh, the history that's being taken from them, I feel, is extremely important because we know what history does. You know, it, it saves you from repeating this, you know, the same mistake if it's a mistake or continuing something uh, that's been working. But if you take it away, what does that gener- The generation has nothing to hold on to, They're nothing. So they don't know why the Constitution was there. You know, um, they're going to think it's because it's only based on a whole bunch of white folks. <laughs> it could be further from the truth. It, um, they may think it's every white person, really far, 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 far from the truth. Uh, but they're putting out information, meaning uh, the ones that are severing our country, they're putting out information to make it seem like, you know, we should be against each other. Um, yeah. This, this country is, is just a wicked, evil thing. And I tell people the country wasn't always wicked and evil. You know, it, you know, there's people who came in called bankers and things like this that yeah. had an agenda. And we, we have to go back into the, you know, when birth certificates and all that stuff was created, why it was created, you know, uh, you know Wall Street. I mean, we even further back, even to, you know, to um, uh, Andrew uh, Jackson, you know, um, getting rid of the, you know, the banks, what was that about? You know, like, you know I mean? looked at, into that and I said, I wonder why they didn't kill that guy. And they, they tried to. <laughs> and he said it was the bankers and the person who tried to kill him. I think the gun malfunctioned. And after that, forever after that, Andrew Jackson carried a gun. And he said it was that a particular guy, the bankers, who wanted to stop that. But mm-hmm. I, I, uh, it's very interesting what you're saying. In that um, the Constitution is there. It's easy to understand. You can just read it. The all the information is there. And as they try to convince us that and I love that you're saying don't take away the history. They're trying to convince us that all these things taking these things away is a is a way to solve all the problems that it caused. But I would argue and I I by your reaction is that the, these problems have emerged as the Constitution has eroded. And what we actually just needed to do, and especially with the race issues, like, well, the people who established that were slave owners. And my answer is, well, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like it was there for the for the people who it favored. Let's just take it for everybody. And we have to we also have to look at that. It, uh, it, it was a time when, you know, I. Let me say it this way. There was a time in the early days when uh, Europeans were coming over here. They saw a bunch of trees. It was it was so much many forests here that uh, they, they hit gold because the warships were made of, of wood. But the other people who were fleeing weren't a part of that. They weren't a part of the industry. They weren't there. They were trying to get away from, you know, persecution there. And it was uh, white on white. <laughs> it wasn't black on black. So I'm like, hey, I mean, that's what history tells me. And I'm always open to to be uh, corrected. Um, but, you know, I'm doing my due diligence. Um, so I can't see and I say that to say I can't see how uh, people can blame. Um, a, a race uh, for that situation. I want to back up on one thing with the Constitution and, and the Constitution not being perfect, but nothing's perfect. But when you consider all the other places uh, on the planet, <laughs> everybody wants to come here. The good thing about, about what we have with that Constitution, again, we can change it. You know, we, we have to understand who we are. We have to function as that sovereign, you know, not a subject. You know, and not really as a citizen, depending on, you know, your school of thinking, you know, you're a sovereign, uh, not as a, 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 a democracy either. You're, you know, a constitutional republic, you know, it's a whole different mentality. And um, and it puts us in a position of, of absolute strength here in this country um, in order to, as you know, to be sovereign, you have to have a military. And everyone has a military through that Second Amendment on that individual level. We're all sovereigns. We, we're not just a nation. Uh, that's sovereign. Um, but I think because of the nation being so open and uh, just allowing y'all kind of ideal ideologies come to come in, there were people who said, ah, I see how to do it now. <laughs> I see how to take over this country because they've been trying to take it down, as you know, since the Revolutionary War. I mean, you know, you, you know how bad that was based off history. I think 
the Articles of Confederation were probably better than the Constitution. And the Constitution was the first blow against that really decentralized. However, they had such a fight on their hands to get that Constitution in that they had to negotiate and compromise a lot. So if we were to stick with the bargain that we cut for ourselves in that Constitution, I think that we we'd be doing great. And so I you know that people say there's a social contract and you consent to be governed. I'm not saying I do that, but if I do, it goes back to what you said. That's the contract and I'm going to hold you to it. There's no more negotiating. You don't get to tell me that I, I'm i I'm better off if I give up some of the stuff yeah, I want. You know, that robust, uh, that, that, that uh, debate, that you know, robust debate over it, you know, we find that, that common ground the best that we can or you win the first four years and uh, <laughs> get you the next four years. That's the beauty about <laughs> This situation. If we lose that, but hey, we don't like Trump now. Well, he's out in four years, even though I think it's way bigger than that. I, you know, and I think we all know it's um, it's some very serious stuff going on now that they, they have to have him gone now. <laughs> he did need to have been gone a long time ago. And uh, but anyway, I, 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 as you know, how when you talk about these things, you can jump all over the place. Um, yeah. I'm way down, right? Said you can't. You can take me that I that I'm not happy to go. But yeah. but the fundamentals are what's important. I think is that I think you're absolutely right in focusing on that because that the answer was there. This is what I always thought people like want a constitutional convention or something like that. And I say, you know, this thing was established during the age of enlightenment. It was hard won and you, and it was so simple and short. You're like, nobody else is going to have that. Nobody else is going to have it. It's very simple and short and we're not going to get something better. And what's more, I think the rest of the world, while they don't actually have their own piece of paper to rally around, and it is just a piece of paper, but we have this um, singularity of purpose and clarity of thought when we have that piece of paper as our side of the contract and the rest of the world, I really believe this, because you see the way they talk journalists and stuff, they'll say stuff like we, you know, when they're not even here. <laughs> they look to that as the standard. And and that's why I think even in countries where they gave up their guns, still the governments don't really crack down on them in a totalitarian way because they still have to get ours or we would wise up and we'd be able to demonstrate to people, hey, you let the guns go then it's going to be like Australia, New Zealand. And they are really cracking down there on people's Let's, rights just in the I, I feel America is different um, when it comes to that Second Amendment because Remember, we're, we're sovereigns in this country, you know, we're individually, um, you know, we're sovereign, you know, that's the original way when you, when you look at it, you know, um, you know, it wasn't, you know, groups and, you know, people started forming different committees and, you know, I mean, they've been formed, but it's gotten more and more and more creating divisiveness um, is what I think. What do you... But what do you think is see i think of i always say hey even gun control advocates should make a carve out for women <laughs> you know like all women mm. should have guns you know i just i'm making a joke but i'm just saying you take i always think of uh i always think of guns as an equalizer mm. And what surprises me, what I can't understand is how the people who are the weakest are often the ones who are most vocal against guns. They're like, oh, stand your ground laws will just hurt you. And because a new stand your ground law came out today and people are saying that's just for people who are homicidal maniacs and want to run around killing everybody. Like actually, when they have stuff like waiting periods where you can't get a gun for a few days, the, the murder rate goes up because a lot of times the people who are trying to get a gun in a hurry are trying to defend themselves against a domestic abuser or something like that. And it, it just seems like the narrative about gun control has, I mean, the people who advocate for it seem to be the people who would, you know, they would benefit from a little equalizing. Yeah. I mean, it, there's, I, I, I think the only reason why it's even a real concern now is because you know, there's been, you know, some underhandedness mm -hmm. to uh, get this country in a uh, different position, let's say, um, than what we're used to. And that's that's pretty much always been the case, though. I mean, that's our history here mm -hmm. is the underhandedness by, yeah. you know, rich elites and uh, bankers. And like you were saying earlier, and like with regards to the Constitution, like I don't know if you guys have uh, ever heard of uh, uh, Thomas Hutchinson. Uh, he wrote these letters back in the 1700s. 
he was a, a governor of Massachusetts in like 1770 to like right during the time of when the uh, Declaration of Independence was being written. So he was he was hip to everything that was going on at the time. He wrote these letters to um, his cousin or something, somebody. And basically he breaks down everything that these people are the, who are advocating for the Constitu- uh, Declaration of Independence. Uh, and the rebellion against uh, uh, Britain, he's basically, he breaks it down. He's like, he's telling them that all these people uh, are these rebellions, rebellious people from all the, the, the colonies, the, the rich guys, they're drumming up and, and creating propaganda against Britain. Not that they were saints or anything, but they also pr- made um, a lot of propaganda and agitated people who were who were totally fine and happy with how they were living. And so, because they needed, they needed support. So he's explaining this. This is in seven, this is like in 1775, 76. I could send you the the letters. And uh, he also is basically saying that, that this declaration of independence, it's it's their way of taking away power from each colony and amassing it themselves, consolidating power. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, the people that lived in the U.S. at the time, they just saw it as elites fighting elites, and yeah. they were indifferent to it until they had that propaganda that you're talking about that they spread around there to get them riled up. Yeah, yeah, and even him, even he made the comment about their being hypocrites by talking about inalienable rights, except for their slaves. It's like, oh, a man are created equal. What about their hundreds of thousands of slaves from Africa? He says that. And this is back then. He's making that same point people make now, you know, about them. But, uh, you know, I used to be, you know, all gung ho, gung ho, let's get back to the Constitution type thing. But the more I study history, the more I see how the Constitution was a coup d'etat in itself. I don't I don't buy that anymore personally. I mean, I think if we were to adhere to something, it would be the Constitution would be better than what's going on. But it has no power. I didn't sign it. Nobody else signed it in America, but those rich guys back then. So it's no, it's not, I, I didn't sign the contract, you know, I don't have a, you know, I have a copy yeah. of it, but my name's yeah. not on it. And those guys know. that did one of their best skills that they're, they're infamous for Sam, Samuel Adams, Benjamin Franklin. These guys were propagandists. Yes. This is yes. what they did. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's hard for me to, 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 to be, you know, gung ho about teaching yeah. it in that sense. Uh, well, well be- I think what well, well, I'm I'm getting at. We have to go back to the beginning because we don't have anything in between. Yet. And God created the yeah. heavens and the yeah. earth. You know, and that we, beginning. And, and we don't. And not. And, <laughs> and well, well, not that. Why not? Hold on. <laughs> but, Actually, I think the agricultural revolution was the beginning of the end. If you want to go all the way down there, I, you know, I think I they probably. Do. I think the founders probably treated the Constitution not unlike a lot of the politicians do today in that when it's beneficial to them, they cite it and they hide behind it. And then when it's not, they they use other language to talk around it. That's how it was set up to benefit them, to to consolidate power, just like – you know, just like everything we see today is just uh, it's just in the line of what, uh, you know, has been going on since the beginning here. I agree with you on that. And I, I had actually given up on all that. I loved Albert J. Nock, who said the that exact thing. I highly recommend our enemy, the state. But when I had to go on the radio, I knew there really isn't that much to talk about when you're, you know, how do you really do any good to just throw up your hands? And I yeah. concluded that it was a good way to kick the can to identify our rights. And although I will tell you this, although that is what they were up to, this is why in the beginning I said that the contract they negotiated, there's a concept in law of a meeting of the minds. You cannot be obliged to uphold a con- a contract that meant something different from your understanding of it and your agreement to it. So we did negotiate it to mean a certain thing. And they secretly, I'm sure, expected and got exactly what they wanted out of it. But one of the things that's that's different about that from what you get today is this today's stimulus package is like a thousand pages long. Right. And <laughs> yeah, they have 
have a couple of hours to look at. Constitution is like one big long page and you can read it and understand yeah. it. And they can say it means something else and they can bribe their judges and they do all do that. It's true. It's not really working, but I do think it's slowing them down. And I don't really have any like the Bill of Rights, which is designed to tie their hands. Look, I don't believe that there is a self-limiting government that's going to work. But if the whole of human civilization is just trying to kick that can of tyranny. This is a good, you know what I mean? I, are we going to ever win? Are we really going to have an, you know, a, a state of a self-ordering society without the use of force? I don't know because a lot of bad people out there, but maybe stuff like this is the way to kind of keep them at bay. I mean, it's a reasonable, you know, the debate either way. No way. He's shaking his head. I think it's wishful thinking. Uh, what do you what do you think is uh, a realistic thinking? Oh, oh, what is realistic? Well, it's, whatever's realistic is not going to we're not going to ever see in our lifetimes. But um, uh, I mean, it goes back to uh, uh, like, you know, you ever read the, the Machiavellians? Yeah. Like James, yeah. Just like it's, democracy is impossible. It's 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 technically impossible, you know, um, but uh so what is possible? Well, yeah, I, I think you know, abolishing the state would be the best thing to do. I, I'm afraid. See, here's but you know, I'm I'm a radical. I'll be called a radical and a conspiracy theorist for for that. I'm, and I, I'm with you. And no, I will a, I will catch yeah. heat from from the, my conservative friends for, and my leftist friends for you know for oh for sorry crapping, crapping on the Constitution and well, the think, found, founders and all that. But I, I don't. Well, no, I, I think what you're doing is what's in the Constitution. <laughs> you got the First Amendment going on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. it, that's the thing to me that's the most important thing we can we can talk but when you get to the point that for example i was watching uh the, i think it was a while ago um alex jones one of the young ladies were uh working for him went to the college campuses and they wouldn't listen to a word each other had to say you ever you ever see those yeah the, the man on the street where they ask the yeah. questions and that yeah 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 and and i always you know found that very interesting because you know you got a chance to go into the college campuses and then you just see these people just totally shut down like they don't want to hear anything they just blank like over <laughs> you know and so the, but so my thing is we have to find out how to get conversations going back again we have to slow yeah. down i feel and the the first amendment is important we can't i mean i don't want nobody tell me what i can't say i mean I, I, you know there's consequences here for things that you say I, I get that but i like that first amendment i like i like i like i like all anything that makes me free it's first, first for a reason yeah and like i said we can improve upon anything what i like about what's happening now even with the elections uh going on is that it's young people, all different races I talk to, talking politics. To me, that's adult. We have to establish what we have first before we can play in it. You know, we, we you know, you know what I mean. Other than that, your head is in the sand. You just, you're just going to buy. Yeah. You know, as if nothing's yeah. happening. Is it the, the, politics they're talking about? Uh, sorry, Ben Clickhead. That what you said earlier, connecting to this with the young people and talking politics and teaching people uh, how to think. What's going on right now in an aggressive form is they're teaching people how not to think. They're trying to get people not to think. They're trying right. to get people not to identify as an individual. They want people thinking in terms of the group that they are identified to be in. They're told to be in so that they don't so that they're not empowered. You know, because if you're no different, if you they, they want to brand people just like everybody else in a group that they're identified in, then they want to pit that group against another group, then they want to make everything emotionally charged and political so that no conversation could ever be had. Exactly. So that when somebody brings up one thing or asks one question, they get just slammed by everybody and overcoming that is that's psychological, everything. That's psychological. I just wanted to say that that would be uh, one way to identify that people yeah. who you can't talk to that just lose it. I mean, lose it. Literally, mm -hmm. they hate you. They loved you forever, but they'll they'll leave you. You know, hey, you know, can't be friends like, anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When did that happen? And it's the yeah. smallest things. It's like Plato. Plato was killed. We've lost some friends. Ask questions. Yeah, not we've, lost, we've lost some friends, but everything you just described about the the groups and everything that. Uh, democracy uh, enables that. It incentivizes that. Um, it. Yeah, this is what, what we're seeing is a re result of democracy. So how, yes, how, and a result of the misteaching of what the country is, is because we're we're a republic, but they they kind of skew that the way that, that it's supposed to work. The representatives pick right. and and it's in in favor of the mob.
Well, because also the representatives can't know what you want because they start wading into business that they have no place in a representative. So they said, well, we can't explain to you why we need to obliterate Syria because it's too sensitive. But they act like it's a representative situation. But I, I yeah. want to respond. Let me can I finish one thought yeah, there, yeah, Mike. I want to sure. what what you're saying, Zay. I think is, is right. It is overcoming all of that and having those conversations again without getting triggered and listening to people and not assuming the worst case scenario of every statement or every action somebody does, which has become the standard. You do one thing and you appear to be on the opposite side, and suddenly you're the most. It's the most vile intent is projected into you and, and you're evil and that has to be overcome. And I, th- I think it's possible. I know with one-on-one conversations it's a lot more possible than when people on social media and in big groups, but I think that's the key. It's difficult in small groups as well. I, I mean, Zay years ago used to trigger me. Like we would be in, <laughs> we'd be in deep conversations and he would say something that would challenge me. And I would, had no idea how to respond. Really? Like, Cause it would just like, it was like, I had no idea. I mean, Okay. And then I would just get kind of get mad. And, and then it was the same thing. And then I have to go research, you know, and it's same thing with, you know, other, other, you know, some, we'd be on the tour bus, we'd have discussions and things would get heated and, you know, you know, Zay likes to talk, you know, and he, you know, <laughs> he's got some, he's, you know, he's got, he's been studying stuff for years. Yeah. So in, in one sense, uh, I mean, I'm glad because it may, it forced me to think, you know, a where beyond. was your head at, JJ? Like, what? What were you just I like a real con- Democrat or what? Oh no, no, no! I, I wasn't very political at all back then. I was. I mean, I was just basically back then. I was just super involved with my church, and I was just all about my ministry. We had an arts ministry for actors and entertainers, and and then just doing music and you know starting a family. You know, that's that's about it. You know, if you if if I would have been. Uh, you know, longer than 20 years ago, my head was just like sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And that was it. <laughs> Party, yeah, you right. know, every night. And I didn't care about any of this stuff. So, but well, uh, I'll tell you the church thing. That's an interesting um, angle. I was thinking is that to tie what you guys are saying <laughs> together is this idea that you're evil because you have this other opinion. Then all of a sudden, I mean, for you to really hold that thought in your head, you have to think that there are like half the people who you run into are evil. Like if you just think it's like Democrat or Republican, whatever side you're on, like the other half is evil. That a, I mean, it just, it can't be true because like, you know, buildings get built and stuff gets, you know, I always think of the idea of like plum and level, like that's true. And we couldn't all work correctly if we didn't have some sense of 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 right and wrong and i think that we're not evil but by making us hate each other we manifest kind of evil and either you could just if you wanted to find in yourself to give the other person the benefit of the doubt that they're not evil or what's even harder but a lot more people are going to have to do it love the other person anyway and well, I think yeah. that that's the answer, really. Well, well you, you said something that I, it, it's now this is, you know, I'm going to go left just a little bit. You know, my thing was always trying to find out, you know, if I can find out things closest to the beginning as much as possible, I think I would be good. So, yeah, I, although I listened to some uh, Maxwell Jordan years ago and um, and he was just talking about the spell and. It, you know, that, and it was the alphabet, you know, just, just, you know, it's called spelling. That's why it, it just made perfect sense. And I'm like, wow, one day I, I, I started thinking about that. You know, we got these symbols called the alphabet yes. <laughs> and we just take those things lightly. <laughs> you know, they formulate all the words, everything that, you know, all the contracts, you know, every con- every marriage contract, every, every contract. And so we're, we're looking at, you know, I'm looking at the magic of these words. It's real magic. And so one day I was looking at the word believe. You're talking about evil. I want to relate this to the word evil you're talking about. So I'm thinking about this word believe. And mm-hmm. I, I, you know, unscrambled the word and came up with this. Doesn't make me right, but tell me what you think. Believe. You take the I, you put it before the B, and you got I, B, and you got L, E, V, E. Well, you reverse it, anagram, you got E, V, E, L, which is I, B, evil. But you, you follow me? So now yeah. evil is really, when you look at it, it's it's a veil. It's the word veil comes out of that. It's done in the darkness. So if you look at the you know, veil, excuse me, if you look at the word veil, you can, you can see evil right next to it. So my thing was, I came to the conclusion that it, it's all veiled. You don't know. 
hey, uh, is your mom in the room? Uh, I believe right. so. You don't know. So I use little things like that to help me change how I think when I'm dealing with people. So whether them to be an evil, we don't know. That's we, we, you know what I mean? That's what that's how we can resolve it. We don't yeah. know. You know, and truth and light are kind of counter that idea of evil and veil. But the funny thing you say about the words, um, I was I read a book recently, made a big impression on me. It was called Against the Green, and it was talking about the early states from 10,000 years ago, basically. And he makes reference to just a sideways reference. He didn't get into the details, but that writing basically always emerged as a way of keeping track of taxation and taxation was always kind of hand in hand with slavery. And and I, after this, I always write down these little phrases like ideological eviction I've got. But one of the phrases I came up with after this was all states are slave states. So before they have the writing, before they had the grain, they people knew how to grow stuff, but they really didn't. They were kind of hunters and gatherers, but really they like just got into the rhythm of how how the how the animals would move and how the tides would come in so they didn't have to run around a lot for the hunter gathering they just had to kind of get in the groove with the different changes around them and that it was the kind of monument building like the monumental state that came in and learned how to kind of get people to to st- stay on the land and plant grain. And when it harvested, they could uh, take half of it right away and dry it out and put it in a silo. And they had to write all the stuff down. And the writing was hand in hand with the taxes and the slavery. And that's why before I said the agricultural revolution was like the beginning of the enslavement. And and I, I kind of you know, I'm still, that's still where I'm, I'm at. And I know that that's like a, a rabbit hole with no, no, <laughs> well, no it's, 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 it's a fun one. It's a fun one. There. <laughs> it's, it's definitely a fun one there. So uh, the one other thing I wanted to say, JJ, was that I, I've always, you know, I had this epiphany. I looked at the constitution and I thought, well, if they could hijack that, they can hijack anything. And there's no hope for self-limiting government. And I totally believe that. And then I was happy to find, um, Hayek and others who said that it doesn't matter because society is self-ordering as you trade and form families and love and all that. You just, it's, it's normal. Like, and this goes back to my kind of people are not really evil because, because things are good. But But I have started to move away from, you know, I call myself an anarcho-capitalist because I see in some of the stuff that I've been reading, and and I'm sure you've heard me say this before, but that it's big philanthropy. It's these it's these think tanks. It's these worldwide organizations that are actually, I believe, and I think they're saying that they're happy to undermine any of these kind of governments and act like there's no government. But really, they'll be controlling everything from the virtual world to the financial system to the health system. And they'll do it behind a veil. So you don't know that's what it is. You never get to vote. You never have that contract. And I'm not advocating the contract. I'm just saying I'm I I feel like they're a step ahead of us in this and we need to like think one step past that. And I'm I don't know where to go with that. See, and see, to me, the where to go is what doesn't seem like where we should go. And that would be a commonplace of that, that constitution because of what it represents, we we have to come to an agreement. All of us, we're going at the end of the yeah. day, after all this stuff is going to happen, that we have an agreement. How do you enforce that? Or like, like if you, well, agree- I, it, I don't know how it's going. Well, the, the, the only thing I can say is, you know, first of all, we have to recognize what's happening to this country. We, you know, we have to get enough people to say, hey, do you see that train coming? Down the track, you know, I, hey, you know, if we all see it together, I give an analogy like this, for example, you remember the videos of uh, what's, what's that, uh, National Geographic, I believe, and they would be in the desert showing you, a, you know, prairie dogs lifestyle, you know, prairie dogs be playing in the holes or, you know, yeah. many of them just going in and out of holes and playing with each oh, other, yeah. then a snake comes and all of them snap to attention because they understand danger mm-hmm. collectively. And then as soon as they assess it, they send out, you know, whatever, whoever's going to go out and chase the critter away and it's gone. And if you notice, they go right back to doing whatever it was they're doing. To me, that's just, you know, I like the analogy, you know, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful analogy of what, what I think we should be like. We have to come together, to understand what's happening, uh, who's taking the contract, 
you know. And what is it? Can you can you put some meat on those? Bones? Yeah, oh yeah, I think I, I think it's you know, well, we're looking at a, another country that's going to become you know potentially a super country. That country, I tell people, when you go there, you can drop an album there and you get platinum by default with that amount of people, and they're po- poised to be the next uh, superpower. You talk about China? Yes, and it's 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 supposed to be the next superpower, and that's what to me what's really going on. Everything else is a diversion to keep us from not paying attention, excuse me, attention to that, and all everything. I mean, it's it's sensitive. It's real. These these distractions. But if we take a step back, I, t- I try to tell people, look, we got to look at it like it's a bug in the street, and you picked it up and you put it in the palm of your hand, and you're flipping it over, trying to figure it out. Do not wear it. You don't know it enough to wear. Don't wear it. Don't let it get into your mind. You you know, study it, and and you'll see. You know, so so anyway, I think with with this virus hit, what a couple of days after a two point five billion dollar deal was made, <laughs> uh, if I'm not you know mistaken, and I mean, so leaps and bounds are being made, you know, to straighten out an agenda here in America. I, I think so. I mean, you know, debatably, you know, uh, but it's bigger than that. I think I think the uh, yes make America um, solid again is what the real, real goal is. It has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with anything. It has something to do or anything like that. It has something to do with the powers that be, that new world order or the bankers or the big corporations, whatever you want to call it, are so big they now can own countries. Yeah, I think that I, I would say, and I'm just trying to put this together as you're talking, I think the way the China issue is framed is an us versus them kind of war thing, but I think it is a little, it is different from that. I think, and I, I bet you would agree with me, that it's an extension of that power elite just moving into a place that has a different apparatus, not a constitutional apparatus, but this where their lockdown was just, I mean, it's it's been applauded in all these like think tanks from since before it even happened. There's some scenarios that say, well, if, it, if, the, if we had a big virus in China, it would be okay because they could physically lock everybody up and they don't have rights. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is an extension of that kind of the same elite that we have here that had long ago divorced itself from any kind of national allegiance or even like a a reflection of the citizenry. It doesn't even have to be by nation, nation by nation. Just the fact that the control of the country, whether it's government or just society or whatever, should be a reflection of the people, we the people or however you want to frame it. And this these people have always have for a long time been disconnected and they don't care where they operate from. And maybe that's what the move to China represents. They openly talk about operating above the state, above the nations and having these the philanthropy, the the corporations that are not connected to any one nation being in charge. They don't even hide this fact. And what you were saying about enforcement, we were talking about enforcement a moment ago. I think enforcement comes down at the basic education the education has made people so manipulatable so malleable so they lack in critical thought i think the foundation of that education will help people recognize the threat because the threat is different now than it was when in the national geographic hunters and gatherers days the group recognized the snake everybody recognized what the snake was and they knew that was a threat but now the snake is masked behind a, a suit it's a politician slick hair and talks well and not everybody recognizes the threat people they're saviors they're portrayed as uh, saviors. Yeah, exactly. So that education, that critical thought, that asking questions, that emotional regulation, mindfulness, teaching stuff like that at, at a young age and history, of course, actual history, philosophy, building people, not building people, but educating people in a way where they're empowered to think and act for themselves and to use, as you say a lot, Monica, discernment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's one reason why we homeschool. We didn't want them in government schools. We didn't want them indoctrinated by, by the state. You know, so we we're homeschooling our kids, and yeah. you know, the other day my uh, son uh, he he brought he's nine, and he was teaching his uh, little sister about fiat money. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. About it and how ancient kings would take the coins and scrape off the edges. You know, they would take some of that to to keep more of the money you know and so he knows that that story and how you know currency is manipulated and you know so he's trying to explain it to her in his little nine-year-old way but i was impressed when i heard him that came 
like fiat money. I was just like, teach me about fiat money. Uh, <laughs> that's a, and you know, out of, I don't know uh, <laughs> what channels you listen to. I, I would assume maybe a lot, but I mean, I'm hearing things about, you know, like parallel economies and, you know, the return to gold standard, the end of, you know, uh, petrol dollar system. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of little things that's going on that's, you know, being shaken up and you, and it's always going to be an opposite. So somebody's fighting that as well as somebody's fighting you from doing what you're doing. And so they can continue, excuse me, you know, with what they're doing, you know, if that makes sense. You know. do, do you feel this is something uh, referring to something you said earlier that that it is an us versus them thing. I'm going to pull back like all states are slave states. It was a, a history of um, racial slavery, all kinds of slavery. And that as we look at the crisis that we're in right now and this, I think it's a very pivotal moment. And I, I use as an example, like people were freaking out about the militarization of the police. I was doing shows about it and people were shoulder to shoulder. And right at that moment, Ferguson happened. I think Trayvon Martin maybe was around that time. And it went from us versus them to black versus blue or whatever. And it made people feel, I think it was meant to make people feel like it was not a problem that affected all of us. So they could divide and conquer. Yeah. And now people are just confused because they smell a rat, but they're being told that it's a different rat. And that's how they're not figuring out what we need to do to just have some autonomous defenses. Well, it's, it's just like the George Floyd, um, you know, situation. I, I think about that eight minutes, 46 seconds with all the killings that you, you mentioned and that's happened now in that moment of eight minutes, and 46 seconds, you get somebody that's already you know detained, really. You know that there's cameras out there, your phone cameras all over the place. You know this is happening. And you know, it's it, to me, it was still in sight. You know, it didn't. It, you know, George Floyd was irrelevant there to these people who had that plan to incite, and it got worse from there. He didn't even get yeah. shot, so it's got you know. But you're hearing defunding the police. But see, the thing is that uh, you, you're familiar with Venezuela situation. You know, twenty years ago. You know, mm -hmm. 20, 20 years ago, Venezuela was like America. And I'm telling you, it's oh, almost yeah, the same yeah. game plan, exact yeah. thing. You know, turn to oh, citizens, wow. against the police, police against the citizens. You know, I mean, it's a whole, it's it's so organized that. Cuba too, I think, it had that. Servando Gonzalez, I wonder if you read that book, Zay. It mm -hmm. was called Psychological Warfare. And it's a guy, mm -hmm. I believe he was Cuban. And he said from the beginning, he said Cuba was good and they, or whatever, it was industrialized. <laughs> and they intentionally, as a kind of, Western experiments decided to de-industrialize it and see what happened with it. And one of the things in the book was a letter that I have since seen undisputed, a letter from Fidel Castro to FDR when he was 12 years old saying, I want to work for America. Tell me what to do. Mm, interesting. Isn't that funny? And I just, I feel like they did wow. de-industrialize. And you say that too, it, that like an American experiment. That made me think of the experiment that we're all living through right now. This is a grand experiment, and there will be so many psychological, sociological, world shaping type scientific studies written about this. It probably already are being passed around among, quote, the, the elites, but this is a study in, in human behavior, what people will put up with, how they will behave in, in situations such as this. They're, they're gathering so much data about human behavior right now that they will then sh they shape gather so much information about everything. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, no matter what it is, no matter how deep, we got to really think about that. I mean, these, these people go everywhere. They're in space, they're in amoeba waste, <laughs> they're, in, they're in every kind of situation, studying everything. Yeah. I remember there was a, a, a teacher, um, I have to say her name, uh, Celeste Hawthorne, um, who opened my mind to one thing uh, that was, if you want to keep a black man down, put it in a book because he won't read it. No, I, you know, I read wow. technical books. I read all kinds of books, and I don't, I don't make sense. I read, but it was what we read, you know, and what we should be reading should be law, the things that govern everything we do. We are supposed to be a part of everything that governs everything we do clearly. That's supposed to be first and foremost, in my opinion. Then you build, have funds, your clubs, your parties, your concerts, your, you know, the foundation has to be solid, meaning in, yeah. in the mind of the citizen, it has to be solid. 
Once yes, we get and, there, I think, and and to me, I just think it's it's <laughs> yeah, it might be wishful thinking, as as Jay said, but I just really think if we can get people to understand who they are as, as individuals in this country, they don't know who they are. Yeah, and and it's and we have to do it individually. It's no school. I mean, the school's going to help, depending on how we get reestablished here after the twentieth, um, educating. Um, but we have to do it. We have to do it for our kids. We, you know, like Jay is saying, I, you know, I feel gl- glad hearing what you just said uh, about your son, uh, you know, from you teaching him stuff like that. But we have to be, we, uh, it's our responsibility. That's all I can say. Mm-hmm. And we have to start with all we have. And all we have right now is the Constitution, regardless of what it looks like. It is what it is. And that's what's being held up for as they fight through the courts and everybody's saying they're, they're, um, you know, upholding. So we need as individuals, as the sovereigns, I like to say, not citizens, go yeah. do our due diligence to the point that we understand it, then act. Then act. You don't yeah. know, you don't know. There's nothing wrong I with would, not knowing. I yeah. would like to fold that in. That's a good point. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with not knowing. Sorry, Monica. That, a lot of yeah. people think you have to have the answer all the time. Right. You know, there's a process for searching for the answer. If you think you have to have the answer all the time, then you'll get somebody who could be manipulating you to try to program exactly. it into you. But yeah, it's okay to not know. Exactly. And it's so it's simple and it's on its face. And I want to tie that into something that you said earlier, which was about how we all have to agree. And my feeling, I understand the problems with the Constitution. I, I prefer the Articles of Confederation or just a truly free society. But if you look at how we got to the Constitution and why it's a minimalist kind of document, and when you say, like, think of the fundamental laws, all of that stuff has to reflect what is common among us because that's how we can agree. And it's really not a lot. And it goes to I love Murray Rothbard and his classic kind of there's only one law. Don't touch me or my stuff. And beyond, you know, after that, you can then fold in community, religion, um, culture. You can be a part. That's why I believe in the right to work and travel. You can be a part of whatever norms you want. But if you're going to start having laws that you can call somebody with a gun to enforce, it's a very, very few things we can all agree that's the right thing to do. And it's very simple. So you 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 can read forever on it, but you can also just start with the simple little concepts and talk to people and open each other's minds, which is why I was so eager to talk to you, Zay, because JJ Boogie has been um, just such a help for you know me. I clarify my thoughts, and he's such a great thinker, and it lives yeah. it lives the life of a of a thinking moral person of principle. And I have to say, when he said that you were the first person who talked about these kind of unorthodox viewpoints that lead to bigger thinking, I just was dying to know how, you know, how you got there and where you are now. Well, well, well like I said earlier, uh, just, you know, different people, except from the, I mean, everybody really, uh, from, I'm talking about from, Farrakhan to the Hebrew Israelites to the the Jewish faiths to the Jews against uh, Jews uh, Jews for Jesus faiths to the I study everything that I think is governing us that's controlling us or that could be used to make us feel a one way like I have a thing about being a sheep or being be looked at as a sheep you know yeah. you know sheep will let a wolf come in and just eat it you know you need yeah, they I, tell I'm us not, to be sheep <laughs> say it again. They tell us to be sheep. Yeah, That's, sheep I'm boy. always puzzling over that. Like the sheep, you know, Christ is a shepherd. And I love his message, but that one, it's hard for me to get my mind around. Well, well I mean, think about what a sheep will let a wolf do. You know what I mean? Um, so, and we have minds. And to be honest, the the things that are hurting us that I can see, I, I can see that they're human so far, you know, uh, so far. I mean, I've heard all kinds of things from the aliens and every, you know, everybody behind the curtain. I've heard all kinds of stories. Uh, and, and I'm very interested in hearing more, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so, but, but I, I think the real, um, secret is we're starting to be opened up because of what's happening to this country right now. People are starting to think we're starting to resonate as human beings. Now, as black people, white people, Democrats, we're starting to resonate as human beings. And because we were all suppressed, I, I feel we all became slaves. 
you know, white, black, everybody became slaves. It was just no, what's the saying? Uh, there's no better slave than one that can house and feed itself. So, and I think we all became that, but, but we were suppressed, subjugated. And so now we're waking up, we're thinking, well, wait a minute, who, what did he say? What, you know, we're, we're opening up and all that's good. You know, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, Harvard material has nothing to do with that. It's the basics. We have to get the foundation reestablished, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned. And that's starting with with ourselves, uh, you know, self-respect and being able to respect others. Um, we start there. I think it's going to be uh, easy for us to have the conversations that, you know, we yearn to have so we can iron out as much as we can. And everybody's not going to come along. Uh, and there's going to be people to make sure everybody doesn't come along, you know, um, you know, through censoring and everything. And so it's, it's, but it's a war. It, uh, it, that's what it is. That's the first art of war is know yourself, know your enemy. If you don't know your enemy, how do you know how to fight them or should you fight them? You know? Yeah, and if you don't know yourself, then you don't know the vulnerabilities that they're going to attack. Exactly. So, and, and I think we've been denied ourselves. We became workers. We became, you know, whatever fads, you know, <laughs> were, they were presented to us. Um, and we kind of left being human to the point now that we're literally going into, you know, the technology where we'll be what cyborgs cyborgs transhumanism yeah yeah, yeah trans that's the word i've been was looking for too <laughs> i've been hearing that lately but to me with all the technology uh it, it seems very very obvious that it's it's a fix on on humanity to me uh you know very phones track or something what's the difference between that phone and an ankle bracelet you know right. out, yeah great yeah. point yeah we carry they the don't phone have around. to implant it anymore and you can't live without it and you got it and, and you, gave, and you want it <laughs> yeah. they gave yeah. it to people like the obama phone was not you know that wasn't a present <laughs> that yeah, was but a i'm saying but well, we'll go buy that apple too <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, know we it. buy our yeah. own slate like, our own chains yeah, yeah. So, I, I i do have this this deep-seated like desire to go back to a landline with a yeah. rotary phone and yeah i was thinking about that too, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> but, but how could you? You couldn't function economically without it. Right. They 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 make sure of that. I think. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I didn't have a cell phone until I didn't use a cell phone until I was in, in college on a regular basis, and I just I, I try to think back sometimes, like what was it like? You know, what was life like without this thing? Um, yeah. It was people. very. Um, yeah. you, you know nothing about it. You know, it's it's something, and 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 t truly, I think. The, the baby boomer generation, I think we're a big threat uh, because we know all these things way before it came. I mean, everybody knows about, you know, communication, how how much less of it it was. I mean, you went to the, you had your dime, you went to the phone booth. And, you know, I remember calling my wife when I was uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, in, in the military and I would be, yeah. you know, just put my dimes in. You and know? it would be busy. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a phone time. booth and got his go crazy. You, know, you can find these get lost the all the time. <laughs> It's, you know, it's, but the technology, I, I, and we have to be careful, and, and things haunt me, um, you know, such as, you know, the, you know, uh, Alberton, Georgia, but when you, you know, uh, look at the guidestones and, and, and these plans, and you, you, you know, so it makes, makes me wonder, and I, and I want to be able to wonder, I don't want to buy into what anybody just tells me, you know, I want to go and do my research, so if somebody says, hey, these people got a plan to bring this population down to 500 million people, well, I'm, hey, I got to at least pay attention to it. You know, I mean, I'd be to me, I'd be stupid not to pay attention. Even if it wasn't, I found out it wasn't real. I would have to exhaust that. And, uh, but then and the same that. people who want that are the ones pushing the vaccines. And you got to I mean, and they call us conspiracy theories just for being cautious about it. It's really nuts. Yeah, but, they do this. They'll go. Somebody had an adverse reaction to a vaccine that had no history of previous reactions to, or allergies and ended up in the ICU, but they're thrilled they took the vaccine. They want you to take it as well. And other news, conspiracy theorists say vaccine <laughs> is dangerous. It's, it's, right wing yeah. conspiracy. Yeah, well, right it, wing. it gets me when I hear, and, and I'm not affiliated with any party, but it gets me when, you know, for example, when we look at people thinking <laughs> of dictatorship. So I, I was like, I heard one guy said, I'm taking the guns. And I heard another guy say, who was said to be a dictator, that you can keep your guns. And I'm just observing. I'm, I'm not on anybody's side. I'm just looking at what, you know, what's being stated. And, and, yeah. And you and have so to. This is yeah. And so 
you know, I told a couple of friends, I said, now, why is it a dictator will tell you you can keep your guns? Why would a dictator want his subjects to be armed? The one that sounds like saying, I'm going to take the guns. I'm coming after the guns. That sounds more like a dictator if I had to make a choice. Yeah. And that's such a logical thing that you said. That's so logical and it makes it makes perfect sense. But because everything's so politically charged and people are thrown into these buckets on each side, when people say something like that, you're you it automatically triggers people going oh you must love trump then no it's just a logical thing this being said and, and listen and and i really don't like when people tell me I'll, I'll try to share things with people oh you know you you like trump i'm an observer yeah i'm like looking at a football game <laughs> you know it's if the team the opposing team made a catch a touchdown they made a touchdown I mean, yeah, no yeah. Way. But, you know but people are are uh being taught really to and if it's not my narrative or our narrative is your, and it doesn't matter about any color. As a matter of fact, as, as far as color goes, I've been telling friends, don't call me a black man, red man. I even go by T. Sam Hawaiian. I am a human being. It's just too much chaos and trying to be everything else. And we all are so mixed anyway. <laughs> it's like to me, and it's your role. We're all human beings. And when we're trying to make each class of this or that look, all we got to do is respect each other, pay attention to where the hurts are, because I believe that what's happening with the, the tension now is exposing things. We can address them now. We see the height of it. We have to come to the, to the table and talk. But it seems like there's a faction that's saying, no, I don't care if they want to talk or not. You know, you make them kneel and you make them do this. And, you you know, well, what happened to every man is, you know. Equal. Yeah, and then what? You know, then what? You just swim, yeah, yeah. And, then, and and I know it's ha- the end isn't for us to act like that. Like that's not the all be it that we can respond to people, pe- other people in, in favorable ways. There's someone who has a game plan. There is an agenda, I, I believe, to make us go after each other like this. You know, it, it's 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 distracting us. And it's and, the worst and thing you could up. do. It's the worst thing you could do is to meet this challenge with anger and venom and irrationality and emotionalism and hatred and factualism. So the fact it's just like my thing with don't you don't have to believe the false flag to defend the Bill of Rights. You don't have to think this is a plot to see that it's wrong. You know, it's it's kind of like the covid lockdown stuff. I don't I don't know anything about, you know, I you don't have to believe or not believe in the virus or whatever. But this stuff, California is still getting the worst of it. And they were the ones who were the most vigilant about the lockdown. So you just have to keep your critical thinking skills going. And, and, and clearly, we have to, with what you just said, uh, we have to understand that if, if it doesn't open up, the fact is that more and more companies get lost, more, you know, are lost. More and more people unemployed, it brings you, your status as a country down. That's just it's that's all it is to it. It's not that much magic you know what i mean oh, <laughs> they're taking yeah. from you you got millions of people without it and once it gets to a certain number it's, it's no turning back and that's the sunset that you were talking about so let's let's wrap it up and um but with the caveat that anytime you want to share insights we we're happy to be a uh, a channel for you to get your thoughts out because it's great to have. It's very upbeat to think that we've got hope and it's at the individual level and we can um, reach across all communities to have something that, uh, you know, just unites us. And it's so simple. And, you know, I agree. I agree with JJ about the Constitution but I also feel that it has value and and I'd take it like if they were what if they were actually adhering to it, I'd be satisfied with that. So I like we have to, to, be, to me. We don't we don't know our right place that that's we don't know who we are in the game. All of us. Right. With that. Right. And, that paper. and again, we can change it. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> that's that's what we got. to. You're not going to go to any other country and you're going to change things like that. You know, not without well, war. I will try to keep that positive attitude because I get I, I read we do a daily show, a news show every day. We are reading the news every freaking day and it can really make you feel like it's overwhelming and oh, yeah. and that the regular person doesn't have a voice. But when you turn off the screens, people are still people. And that's where the hope is. 
Yeah, I, I often get I often get overwhelmed and I'll, I'll get depressed about it or scared or whatever. And, you know, and every time I talk to Zay, it's like, yeah, he's seen all the same stuff as well, but he's always so he's always still so positive and hopeful and, and always pushing yeah. on. So it always helps me be like, all right, well, I, I just got to keep I just got to keep going. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Maybe it's literally the screens that are the problem. And Zay has a superpower that he is not exposed <laughs> to. It. Well, I, I'll tell you, Zay does have a superpower. It's that deep voice that every man wishes he has. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Zay can tell the truth with it. And it's just it lures you in to listen to it. It's very impressive. Yeah. Well, Thank you. On that upbeat <laughs> note, let's say goodbye and and know yes. that people will wait for another installment of that. I, I truly enjoyed that, George. I, I, I'm a fan Me? now. I, I've listened to a couple of your shows. Just to let you know, I'm I'm hooked. Oh, yeah. fantastic! Awesome. Well, I'm so glad. I told I told JJ. It's like only if he wants to, only if he's into it, don't put an obligation on him. So he <laughs> he gave you the show to listen to, and I'm glad that that worked. The Christmas yeah. decorations look great, by the way, JJ. Oh yeah, thanks to thanks to the wife. Yeah, it's like Christmas <laughs> decorations and uh, musical instruments and animals and <laughs> toys. Yeah, we got it all. in the background. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where is he? He's all right, guys. Yeah. Well, very for Merry Christmas us. to you, and thank okay, you Merry so Christmas. much for your time and effort. And I know it was a lot of effort. Thanks a lot. Merry Christmas, y'all. Merry Christmas. All right. Thank you.